Howdy folks, Jeff Sankstack here. I want to show you how to uh, use two different methods in Premiere Pro to change the speed of the action in a clip. That is, make it slow motion or speed it up. And one method is a menu command and the other one is an effect. And I'm going to show you how you can combine the two to uh, create some smooth changes to speed, to, in this case to create some slow motion, and have the audio match the action in the slow motion clip. So we're going to work with this particular clip here of uh, my daughter heading down the zip line. There we go. And you can see that this is a fairly sharp image for a video clip. And the reason for that is that I shot this at 60 frames per second, 720p 60 it's called. And I shot it at one thousandth of a second per frame. So that pretty much stops action at this uh, speed. And uh, the purpose of shooting at 60 frames per second is when I put it in the slow motion, that should make the slow motion look cleaner than if I had shot it at 30 frames per second. And one one thousandth of a second also allows the uh, slow motion to look pretty sharp as well. So hopefully that'll be the end result of this little uh, demo. So I want to have uh, her speed change uh, 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 to, let's say, bring it down to, let's say, 25% of the original speed. And so the easy sort of sledgehammer approach to doing that is using a menu command called speed duration. And you can find the menu command by using the context menu, right-clicking on a clip. And then there's the context menu and there's speed duration. And by the way, the context menu is something that's really comes in handy just about everywhere inside Premiere Pro. Wherever you click, there will be a context menu that will open up wherever you click to say things that can be done in that particular spot. So when you right click on this particular clip, the context menu says speed duration. And uh, there's a pretty easy uh, set of uh, items here. We'll just change the speed to 25%. Now I could have changed the duration to some exact time. I want, let's say, the clip to run exactly 40 seconds. Then it would have calculated the percentage. And then here's the little magic button there, maintain audio pitch. It'll make the sound of the zip line have the same pitch, just make it a lot slower. So instead of going like a typical slow motion, instead of being a you know, high speed, it would go, well, the maintain audio pitch will keep it that original higher pitch. Reverse speed means it just reverses the action. And then this ripple edit shifting trailing clips means that if you got some clips after this, uh, Premiere Pro some time ago, would not shove them to the right. But now if you say, yeah, ripple edit, then as if you slow something down, it causes the clips to move to the right. And if you speed something up, it'll cause them to move to the left. OK, just adjusting the microphone there. All right, so we've got all right, so we've got 25% maintain audio pitch. And I'm about to click OK, but I want you to think, OK, what's going to happen now when I click OK? Oh, well, since it's 25%, that's one quarter of the regular speed, which means that we're going to lengthen the clip. It's going to make the clip play slower, so it's going to make it much longer. So it'll be four times longer. Suddenly, it's going to jump all the way across the timeline. You can see it extends beyond it even. So it's four times longer. It'll take four times longer to play the same basic uh, original number of frames. And I'll drag it to the point here right before that little bush smack. You'll see a 25% slow down there. Listen to the feet hit the tree. So it actually uh, keeps the timing of the audio correct after you've slowed it down. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, I think you've got to admit that's pretty cool that you can e so easily slow down a clip and have the audio match and have the pitch be proper. The one sort of drawback to this is that it's uh, so this sledgehammer approach, meaning the whole clip is 25 percent. It's not a gradual change to 25 percent. You can sort of have a gradual change by, let's say, trim, cutting the clip. Let's say we'll cut it right here. Use the, press the C key to turn on the razor blade or click on the razor blade tool and cut it there. Go back to the selection tool, V. Here's the selection tool, the shortcut is V. And I'll right click on this, go to speed duration. And I'll change this to 25%, maintain audio pitch. And so now it'll go from 100% and then smack the 25%. Do slow it down to 25%. Not gradual at all, but I was able to at least, you know, uh, have it happen during the clip. One little drawback is that there's always this kind of drop in audio when you use speed duration at the beginning of the clip. Listen to this. Kind of, kind of, ooh, I kind of jolt there when the audio goes away. So it's not this little issue you got to deal with. 
All right, I'm going to undo those two things and take the clip back to its original pristine state. Now I'm going to use an effect. The effect is called time remapping, and every clip that has any kind of visual information, be it uh, an image, a graphic, or a video in this case, has the time remapping fixed effect associated with it. Uh, that along with motion opacity, those are the three fixed effects for the visual side of a clip, and volume is for when you've got audio on a clip. So time remapping has only one parameter, that's speed. Now before we work with the time remapping effect, we need to do some work with the audio first. That's because time remapping affects only the video. It's a video effect, it's not an audio effect. So when we change the speed of the video, the audio just stays put, which is not necessarily a good thing. So we need to combine time remapping with the speed duration command on audio to try to make the audio match the video after we slow it down. So I need to cut the audio up a little bit. So I'm going to take the razor blade tool and I'm going to clip, you know, cut the audio in two here. Now I'm going to cut it right at the point where the speed is going to start changing. And I need to cut only the audio, not the video. So I hold down the Alt key in Windows or the Option key on Mac and then I click and that'll affect only the audio. I'm going to go ahead now to the point where I want to bring the speed back up to about 100%, uh, right about there. Hold down the uh, option and the Alt key, or the Alt key again, and click there. And now we've cut the audio into three parts. This part at the beginning will be normal speed, this part at the end will be normal speed, and then later I'll take this portion and uh, make it more or less match the uh, speed of the video. It won't be perfect, but it'll be pretty darn close. Now we're going to go, gonna go work at the t for time remapping. I'm going to go back to the selection tool, and here's time remapping. I want to set a keyframe for right about that place where there we set her up to uh, change speed. You need to add a keyframe here in the effect controls panel and to do that you click on this little add remove keyframe button and when I do that it's going to add a keyframe unlike one you've seen before if you've not worked with this effect. It has this little chevron thing that looks like the current time indicator is uh, covering up the middle and you know just making it look like it's split in two but in fact it is split in two. It's two parts to it that you can eventually or later spread out to show the duration of the change from one speed to another. Right now we'll keep those guys together. I just want to change the speed that follows that keyframe. And to do that I just hover over this little ex this velocity line and start dragging it down. And then you can watch the speed change here. It would be nice if I could just type in a number, but it doesn't work that way. You have to just drag it down. And one of the problems with dragging here is that sometimes it's not accurate. Sometimes you get to about 60% and you think you're at 60 when in fact you've dragged it down to 1%. It's kind of a strange little phenomenon here inside uh, Premiere Pro. So that's why I'm going to recommend you work down here in the clip when you use speed or time remapping. So I'll, I'll drag it down though anyways. It'll probably work fine, but sometimes it doesn't. So I'm dragging it down. I get down to about 25% and let go, which worked fine this time. Good. So now it's going to go instantaneously from 100% speed to 25% speed, as if I had just cut it and used the speed duration command. But what we can do here is we can spread these guys out a little bit. So I'll drag it to the right a little bit. And now it'll change gradually. Much more uh, comfortable, much more natural change. But uh, I do like to work uh, down here in the clip instead of up here. It's a little more comfortable down here and it's a little more intuitive because you can see where you are in the clip uh, physically. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Ctrl or Command Z a couple of times till the keyframe goes away and come down and work in the clip here in the uh, sequence inside the timeline panel. When you work in a clip, you typically want to have some real estate with the clip and that means you need to lift up the header here between video one and video two to increase your real estate. That gives you a little more room to work. And you're going to work in this little uh, yellow uh, uh, control rubber band. And right now, this rubber band by default is controlling opacity. If I were to drag that down, it would make it darker. That's the, op that's the opacity control now. But you can change what uh, effect this thing is changing by uh, looking at this little drop-down list. Now, let's say I was zoomed way out on this thing. That little guy, that little drop down list will disappear. So sometimes people go, What happened? I can't control it. That means you got to zoom way in, and then you can start seeing it again. So I'll click that drop down list, and that shows every effect that is on your clip. If you'd added some other effects, they would show up here, but here are the three fixed effects. And if you hover over this, you'll see that motion has all these properties. So you select one property to control with that little control line there, which can be mighty tedious, but with time remapping it's pretty helpful. So I'll, I'll click on time remapping speed, that's the only parameter. It matches the fact it's only one parameter pure speed. 
And now I want to add a keyframe right at this spot, right before my daughter runs into that little bush. To add a keyframe, you hover your cursor over this control line. You notice it's got a little up-down arrow that you probably barely see in your monitor. That means you can lift it up and down. But if you hold down the control key in Windows or the command key in Mac, that little up-down thing changes to a plus, meaning that you can add a keyframe. If I click, no keyframe appears here. A little diamond appears here that you might be used to seeing on other uh, when, elsewhere when you click here. But it does add that little funny keyframe that you saw up here, and there it is matching the whole thing right up there, showing you the the place where the key or the speed will change. And now if you drag on the right side, you'll see that percentage again right down below there. And it's a little bit easier this time to get to 25%. It's just a touch easier here, but not that much easier. We'll get to 26, that's good enough. And again it's going to be instantaneous, but if I just drag to the right, then that'll show you the gradual change. And if you look at the program monitor, it shows you the left-hand side, that's the beginning of the change, and the right-hand side is the end of the change. It's pretty cool that you get that kind of feedback. And now we've got it. We'll go from a little before the change, 100%, to gradually down to 25%. Okay. Now we want to speed her back up. And we'll go from a little farther to the right to that point right there in the bush where I mentioned I was going to do it, right about there. We'll speed her up from there and to a little bit farther into the clip, back to 100%. So I need to add another keyframe. Well, I could hover over here and hold down the control or the command key and do it that way as well. But when you're working down here in the clip inside the sequence, uh, inside the, time, the timeline panel, it too has the add remove keyframe button just as it does up here inside the effect controls panel. So no need to hold down control. Just click on this little add remove keyframe button. There it is. Adds that funny little thing again. We want the right-hand side to go up now from 25% or 26% to 100. So we drag this back guy up to 100 or so. Try to get it right. There we go, 100. And spread out the change a little bit so that's more gradual. So now it's going. she's going to go along at 25%, and then when she gets to this point, she's going to gradually speed back up to 100%. So that's basically it. But you might have noticed that the audio doesn't seem to be working the way it's supposed to. That's because we didn't stretch out the audio, it just stretched out the video. So I've got this thing already split up. Let me just take this guy and put him at the end. And he should more or less match the end. Right there. And then we got the guy at the beginning, who more or less matches the beginning, of course. And then this guy here, we need to bring that down to 25%. So I'm going to bring it down one track so we don't bump into anything. Right click on it and go speed duration, 25%. Maintain audio pitch. There's the magic thing. We want to have the pitch stay the same throughout. And now you can see it's a little bit longer because it's not because we gradually change and gradually go back. So I'm going to just uh, overlap it slightly and see if I can hear where the foot hits. So you can see that the foot hit a little bit before the audio did. So I can slide the audio to the left by holding down the Alt or the Option key and then pressing the arrow key as I slide it over to the left a little bit. And I could even open it up and probably I might even be able to, if I'm lucky, to see the place where the foot hits. Probably right there, that tiny little mark there. But anyway, that's the process for doing it. Now you notice there was that, that funny little dead sound at the beginning. That little thing there. So what we're going to do is we're going to spread the audio out a little bit like this. Oops, we don't want to do that. We're going to hold down the Alt key to do this. So we just drag this just the audio portion. And we'll make a little, uh, add some keyframes here as well. Just hold down the Control key or the Command key and have the audio gradually blend together. Hold down the uh, Control or Command and add some keyframes here. And though the audio will blend a little bit more nicely, hopefully. And do the same at the end. Then we try to basically adjust where the foot hits. And that is basically the process to uh, have the audio match even though time remapping does not change the audio. So there's two methods to change the speed. Uh, the speed duration command, which is the sort of blunt force instrument, and time remapping, which allows you to do it more gradually, more naturally. Of course, the problem with that is it doesn't affect the audio, so you overcome the audio issue by using speed duration on audio and then attempting to blend the two things together. And uh, that's just the way it works here in Premiere Pro. See you guys later.